Hey, this is Mr. Lineski with Unit 4, Section 3. We are still proving triangles are congruent, but instead of looking at side, 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 and side, angle, side, we are actually looking at angle, side, angle, 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 side, and something called hypotenuse leg. Uh, so this will wrap up our proving triangle section, and then we have one more section for the unit. Um, all right, so um, kind of continuing in the fac fashion of the uh, last notes here, uh, angle, side, angle, or ASA, um, is when two angles and the included side of one triangle are concluded to two angles and the included side of a second triangle. Uh, therefore, we can say the triangles are congruent. Uh, so remember that included side means that it's the side in between two given angles. Um, so for example here, I could say something like angle A is congruent to angle D. So we would want to mark that. Um, the side um, or let's let's do the angles first. So angle C congruent to angle F. So now if I was like, what's the included side? The included side is the side that's in between these two angles. So if I have angle A and angle C, the included side is side AC. It includes those same letters. So for the side here, I would want to say that AC um, is congruent to DF. So if all of those things happen, then I would be able to say that triangle ACB is congruent to triangle DFE, and my reason for that would be angle side angle congruency. Uh, so we are looking at different figures and different ways to kind of prove some things are parallel. So if I gave this situation here, um, how would I prove that these things are parallel? So one thing I want to point out to you is the difference between these arrows here and these little lines here. Um, the arrows indicate parallel. Um, parallel does not mean congruent. So technically, I don't know anything about the sides here except that they're parallel. I can't just assume that BC is congruent to AD. Parallel does not mean congruent, so keep that in mind. But what can I say from parallel? From parallel lines, that's when we want to think back to our last unit, that when I have two parallel lines and a transversal here. Um, so if this, these are my two parallel lines, this is my transversal, I have created alternate interior angles here and here. Um, if I look at these parallel lines here and here, with this still as my transversal, I now have created the red alternate interior angles. And so now I have these alternate interior angles, and then don't forget that you still have your reflexive property that BD is congruent to BD, um, so that's reflexive. And so this would then be, so remember, when it looks kind of jumbled like this, you kind of want to ignore one of the triangles and just kind of look at one and say, okay, what do I have labeled? I have angle, side, angle. Um, so anytime you see parallel, I would say about 80 80 percent of the time the parallel lines um, are going to mean that there's alternate interiors somewhere. Um, typically it could mean that there's corresponding but it's very rare that we see that. It's never going to be something where it's exterior because everything's happening inside the triangles, so they should typically be interiors. So when you see those little parallel arrows, you should think, look for alternate interior angles. Okay, moving on to um, angle-angle side congruency. It's essentially the same thing, except now we have two angles and it's the non-included side. So if I had something like angle A congruent to angle D, uh, angle C congruent to angle F. So now the non-included side um, is any of the sides that don't have both of those letters in them. So I could say something like AB um, is congruent to DE. And so that gives me angle, angle, side. 
Uh, so again, I could say something like triangle ACB is congruent to triangle DFE, and that would be because of angle angle side. So another type of thing to look out for. So we have shared sides, which are a reflexive property. We have vertical angles. Uh, we just talked about those parallel lines and alternate interiors. So here's another kind of example of something to look out for. Um, so if we're given that KL is congruent to JM, so KL is this, JM is this, so that's a side that's congruent. Um, and we know that N angle NKL NKL is up here, and NJM is up here. How can we prove those two triangles congruent? If we're trying to prove that MJN is congruent to LKN. Um, if you notice, I can kind of slide these two triangles apart, and it would kind of look something like this. KLN, whoops, that's an N there. Uh, and if I slid the other one apart, it would kind of look like this, M, N, J. The idea is that both of these triangles contain angle N. It's the same angle in both triangles, um, and so that is called a shared angle. And so we could still say something like angle N is congruent to angle N because of reflexive property. So just because it's an angle now doesn't change reflexive. It's still congruent to itself. Um, but now it's a shared angle. And then again, we would say that this is angle, or I'm sorry, angle, angle side. So we're still proving it by angle, angle side. All right, and then the last way to prove that two triangles are congruent is something called hypotenuse leg. Um, if the hypotenuse and a leg of a right triangle are congruent to the hypotenuse and a leg of a second right triangle, then the two triangles um, are congruent. So the key to this is that it has to be a right triangle. If it's not a right triangle, it's not going to work. Um, and so that's always kind of one of the steps is to establish that the triangles themselves are right. Um, so if I had a situation like this where I said, okay, let's say that AC was congruent to D E because those are the hypotenuse. Remember, hypotenuse is across from the right angle. Um, and then a leg. I can pick any of the legs. So let's just say that B C was congruent to F E. Um, looks like this. So now because those are right triangles, I would be able to say that that's hypotenuse legs because I have the hypotenuse and a leg in both triangles. So that could be something like ABC is congruent to DFE. And that would be by hypotenuse leg. All right, uh, let's take a look at a proof, kind of see what a proof looks like using these things now. Um, so how would we prove the triangles congruent in this proof? So keep in mind that anytime you're doing a proof, you kind of want to do the givens one step at a time. So from this, the first step is that AD is perpendicular to BC. So that just means that I'm creating right angles. So because those are right angles, I can establish that triangle BDA, whoops, um, and triangle CDA are right triangles. So how do I know that? I know that because that is the definition of perpendicular. So because those um, triangles have right angles in them, I just say that's the definition of perpendicular. So now that I've established that they're right um, triangles, that's kind of going to lead me to go towards hypotenuse leg. So let's take a look at what we have here. AB, our next given, is congruent to AC, or BA congruent to AC. So why do I know that? That was given to me. Put a star next to that. And so now, what else do I have? I have two triangles pressed up against each other. So that's going to give me AD congruent to AD. That's our reflexive property. So now the tricky thing with hypotenuse leg is you really only need two of those stars. So the third star 
is technically hidden in here. By establishing that they're right triangles, we're kind of saying, hey, we can use hypotenuse leg now. Um, and so that's technically our third star. And so we're trying to prove these triangles congruent, prove ABD is congruent to triangle ACD, and that would be because of hypotenuse leg. So that's again what that kind of looks like there. All right, and then a couple little problems here, things you'll see on the tests, on the quizzes. Um, so state the third congruence that is needed to prove the two triangles are congruent. Triangle ABC congruent to MNO uh, uh, using the given postulates or theorems. So given postulates and theorems now are these things. So it's fair game. We can talk about all five of them now. Um, and so, okay, given that BC is congruent to NO, and given that angle B is congruent to angle N, I want to use side angle side congruence. So what additional piece of information would I need to mark here so that it was side angle side? Well, if you take a look at the figure, always mark your figures, that's important. Uh, we would say AB is congruent to NM. Looking at the next one, start with a clean slate here. Uh, given that angle C is congruent to angle O, given that BC is congruent to NO, I want to use angle angle side. Well, if you look, that's an angle, that's a side. So my third thing has to be an angle, um, but I want it to be angle angle side. So I wouldn't want to put the angle here because that would be angle side angle, which means I need to put the angle up here angle A and A matches with M so I would say angle A is congruent to angle M and then our last one given that A is congruent to M given that AB is congruent to MN and I want to use angle side angle so notice angle side I would want the angle to be here because if I put it here it would be angle angle side so that means we need to establish that angle B is congruent to angle um, N. Alrighty. That is it for proving triangles congruent. Thank you for watching. I know it, and now you know it.